When you think of world-class design, a garbage can doesn't immediately come to mind, unless it's the Garbino. The breakthrough for us was when the Museum of Modern Art in New York accepted it into the permanent collection. The fact that the museum actually recognized the lowly trash can was just stunning for us, and it proved that great design doesn't have to be expensive. Since its introduction in the mid-1990s, the Garbino has helped make Umbra one of the most successful home design companies in the world. The Garbino embodies its philosophy that any object, no matter how mundane, deserves a great design. It's elegant, sexy, much like the famous actress Greta Garbo for whom it was named. All that style packed into a plastic trash can could only come from one designer, Karim Rashid. I was always a believer in this kind of really democratic product, product for you know, everyday life. I'd always look at products and think, you know, what needs improving? I remember seeing that all the waste cans were these kind of black, uh, plastic, kind of rectangular cans, and I thought, you know, a lot of these objects need some life. Karim had been pitching us for a lot of different ideas. I remember seeing that sketch almost instantly, and we knew it was the right, right approach. Karim's approach was that beauty and function are inseparable, even in a trash can. First, he gave the Garbino a curved bottom. Every time I had a wastebasket, if I put coffee cup in it or some liquid would form in the corners, and then I have to go in there and clean it. So a rounded bottom is perfect. It's so easy to clean because all the, everything would kind of drip to the center. Um, then, you know, then I took a scooped cut at the top. Then the garbage can only fill up to the bottom of the scoop, which means the hands never hit the garbage either. So it was actually driven from all these really practical criteria. And the function, of course, is very good because it holds your trash beautifully. And the translucent plastics that we run in, are, for example, are, are really, really kind of stimulating. I use them for everything from trash cans to vases to uh, buckets for washing my car. But it had a rocky start. We built about six prototypes, and they were shown to some of our key clients. They weren't really sure if people were really buy the product. People looked at it, thought, mm, it doesn't look that great. It looks a little bit like a body cast. Now that was shocking to us because we were ready to invest a lot of money in our tooling. Umbra invested hundreds of thousands of dollars to make the precision tool they needed to manufacture the Garbino. This factory pumps out more than 7,000 of them every day. The process is called injection molding, and the polished steel tool is made up of two parts, the cavity and the core. The different systems that are in place just to manufacture a plastic part are incredible. It's actually far more complex than I think people realize. The process begins with white pellets made of polypropylene, a plastic which gives the Garbino that cool, translucent look. The pellets are vacuumed into the tool, along with specialty colors, and melted. Then, the molten plastic is injected through a nozzle as the core presses against the cavity, leaving a tiny gap less than one-tenth of an inch where the plastic will flow and the Garbino is born. As the plastic enters the cavity of the tool, it starts to cool down. Within seconds, the part has solidified enough for the tool to open. A form like this allows for the injection tool to pull very easily out of the mold, number one. Number two, as a form like this, if you make a cone, then one can could get stuck into another when they're shipped. And if they st stick into each other, you get suction and they actually just crack. So a curved form doesn't allow them to kind of get pushed into each other. It takes about 35 seconds to get the plastic into the tool and the tool to open and the part to be retrieved. We have tools around the world doing this, so highly manufacturable. Polypropylene is an inexpensive product, which means you can make a democratic product, number one. Number two is it's fluid. It's warm, it's flexible. When you burn it, it only gives off vapor. Basically, it's water. So you're not putting chlorine in the air or, or toxins in the air. So it's, you know, it was all around a kind of, let's say, again, a holistic project. They even recycle the plastic by grinding up products that are defective in some way. So the waste ends up as the next waste can. The Garbino is any company's dream product. We agonize over getting it right. One wrong turn in the road would really be the, um, the difference between success and failure. There weren't many wrong turns with the Garbino. It way outdid what any of us thought it would. It's simple, elegant in its shape. It's, it's just a beautiful form, and it works really well as a garbage can. So it's actually an embodiment of our philosophy. 
go to those everyday objects and think how can we reinvent them, how to make them more functional, uh, sexy, interesting, and at the same time, try to make them affordable so they're accessible to everybody. And the mass appeal is what designer Karim Rashid is most proud of. If I go into somebody's average home, and what I mean by average is somebody who doesn't really know much about design culture, and I walk into their bathroom and I see Garbino, for me that's more important than being in a museum collection.